tell him about the time we faced him. All right. Well, as I remember... At Avenger headquarters... Welcome to the MCU DNT Plus podcast with myself, Andy Stead. And me, Jason Cotter. And myself, Jarian Gibson. Good stuff. Excellent. Lads, we are here with a special episode. We have squeezed this one in when we could do it so that we can talk hot on the heels of that Loki finale, yeah? Yeah. Good. Yeah, so- I wanted to get this one in. Yeah, definitely. And as we can, as we can see, so this is this is pretty late at night for me, so that we can squeeze it in in time for you guys. Jason's obviously sitting in his car. You know, we've got all sorts of stuff going on, but <laughs> but we was <laughs> yeah. So, but we was keen to get this one in, wasn't we? So, for anybody that's listening or watching and following us, um, we generally record on a weekend and we release on a Monday. Um, but you know, Loki's been released on a Wednesday, um, and we feel that it was only the right thing to do. To, to get right in there, get stuck in while it's relevant, while it's still hot, while the theories are flowing in on the group and just say, look, this is what we think um, and get the episode out there straight away. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, uh, we, we like to keep the consistency and, you know, give you guys a, a regular time frame when we release these and record them for you all. And but like Andy said, you know, this, we want this now it's hot and heavy. Here we go. Let's get into it. You know? Yeah, definitely. So, um, Start. Let's let, let's kind of let's walk through the episode a little bit, maybe to start with, um, a little bit like we did with the episodes four and five um, on the last episode. So we started off the episode, and instantly, as soon as the episode started, as soon as the the, the video started, I was just like, you know, jaw drops. Like, what's going on here? Because we had these. Um, audios the little clips the sound bites overlaid on top of the marvel studios logo yep. coming in mm-hmm. um and and that was interesting and i do you know what i started doing? i instantly started thinking of um who can i hear what voices can i hear what are these you know i and i have i know now well, that's, I that's kind of like we're groomed to do that now when it comes <laughs> to marvel right because we always have to go back and someone's like hey did you catch this voice and you know these little things so when any we anytime we hear like a mix up montage, uh, like our brains just automatically click, like, oh, where's the Easter egg I need to find? You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah, so, I I go on, Joe. So there there was one thing too, you know that that uh, that intro, you know the the changing of it, the the voices, kind of <laughs> the different pictures uh, of over the MCU up until now. There was one I found interesting. I'm not sure if there's an Easter egg or if it's a callback to uh, Avengers Endgame. So th- there's one piece where you see a spaceship. And then you hear the, you know, one small step for man, one giant step for mankind type of thing. Um, is that a throwback to Natasha and Cap and in, Endgame in, in going to get Thanos on on um, on at the garden? Or yeah, is that an that. Easter egg to Fantastic Four, possibly? Uh, I that think was, was my theory was the Fantastic Four. You know, yeah. with the moon and, and, you know, then it could play into maybe the inhuman somehow, you know, but uh, oh, yeah. I think it's a little too soon for it to be Fantastic Four, really. Yeah, 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 the, the, yeah, what threw me off was the one small step thing because that voice threw me off. But then I was like, well, it kind of looks like a Quinjet, but they weren't on a Quinjet though. They were on um, uh, the Milano. Uh, the Milano, yeah. 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 I, I think from what I understand, there was there was obviously um, Neil Armstrong's yep. voice in there and there was um, Greta Thunberg's voice in there as well. Yep. Um, and there was Nelson Mandela's voice in there as well towards the end, um, as long as some... Uh, as, uh, along with a lot of, um, you know, sort of standout quotes from the MCU. Um, but do you know what I started thinking of? I started thinking of um, the end of um, the last Star Wars movie. Um, what was it well, called? The, the, the Rise the of Skywalker. Real Star Wars movie? No, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, the Rise of Skywalker when yeah, Ray yeah. is like down and out and you hear all the voices. Hearing all the because, Jedi yeah. voices. Yeah, yeah, because they brought in all the voices, didn't they? There was like that yep. Samuel Jackson was there. There was the voice actors from the cartoons. There was Ewan McGregor was there, and Yoda, um, Liam Neeson yeah. was there. Yoda was yeah, and all these different actors come back to do a little bit of voices. And I was listening carefully because I was thinking, and I've gone back over it, and I've obviously read about it on the on the internet. But I was wondering whether they was going to start throwing in little bits from like other um, non MCU Marvel projects. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. That would have been a cool idea. I, it I would have been. Backwards. I wonder if they did. I'll have to go back and double check on I, that. I don't think they did. I don't think they did because that was the first thing I kind of thought, oh, I wonder whether they've done that. And that's kind of why I went and looked up about it, but they hadn't. Yeah. But, See, well, so what we- I thought with that, with that intro thing, what, my, what I took from it was, I mean, if you look at what quotes they used and from who, those were all extremely, like, history-changing, impactful moments. Yeah. So I think that was kind of a nod, pretty much saying that, you know, this episode from here on out after this series, it's going to change the history of the MCU. Everything we know, you know, it's that much of an impactful, you know, episode and impactful series in general. Because, I mean, mm-hmm. if I even said it himself that, you know, this series was going to change the entire MCU. Yep. Buckle yeah, up. Up <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> and then it didn't waste any time, did it? Going straight into no, those, those amazing I, I visuals. Did. That we've we've got, we had those amazing visuals that we've expected all through the whole season, um, yeah. of of you know the the uh, the universe is coming in and the time stream and then um, this that series sort of, honestly yeah. has been unreal with its visuals. Yes, I mean uh, Andy, I know you've noticed it. You know, being a big movie guy, that like some of the you know visual effects and just the scenes that they used and the way they were panning, like you know for the long shots, whatever they're called. It was. It blew my mind. I mean, I could watch the whole thing with it on mute and still be in awe. <laughs> yeah, I think some of the compositions as well have been really nice. You know, the way they've framed the characters within the scenes. Yeah, have, yes. uh, have just been. Have just. They've been more. Um, uh, it's almost like they've thought more about that sort of artistic side of, of how to frame these characters. Jason, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why? It's I don't know. Whatever, noise. whatever you're doing with your with your microphone, what I do? Think, I don't know. You went like this and you fiddled with your microphone. Yeah, don't and do it that. Made a really loud noise. Oh, don't do that. Okay. All right, all right, all right. My bad. So, sorry, everybody, for the technical issues. But like yeah. we said, we're all sort I'll of squeezing this. Out. We're shoehorning this episode in. <laughs> and, but uh, anyway, sorry. I got to the blooper reel too. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, but yeah. So we had these amazing visuals, and then we got straight into um, what was Castle Limbo. I guess we can call it. That we well, didn't the, the, have Citadel. Name, the Citadel. Yeah. Citadel. Yeah. Citadel. Yeah. That's its actual name. It, it, that's from the comics as well. With uh, yeah. he who remains, he resides in the Citadel at the end of time. So. Right. Okay. Lovely. And then I think from that moment, I think everybody then went. This is going to be Kang. It just, or, or sorry, a variant of Kang. Yeah. It's just, are we going to see him? When are we going to see him? How long are we going to see him for? Uh, you know, it was, I was, it, I was just sitting on the edge of my seat going, come on, when, when, when? <laughs> and then, and I think we've all, I know you've certainly agreed, Jari, and I've seen you mention it a couple of times today uh, on the group. And I've said exactly the same. And I guess Jason feels the same as well. I haven't actually heard him say, I was not expecting, I, I think we've all said we might have expected it to be a little nod at the end or maybe a little glimpse or something like that. Yes. But not for nearly exactly. the majority I, of the episode. I still, I can't believe they did it like that. They just, they just threw it at the wall and boom, here he is. Like, like you said, I was expecting, you know, maybe a name drop or, you know, a nod towards, yes. the, you know, the possibility of him or maybe even like a, the worst case is like a spaceship in the background or something. But or hear his just voice. Threw him in there like full blown, like, guess what? He's here now. There's his and this is happening like i was like wow yeah, yeah. definitely there surprising. Was, there was a bold move especially i mean you know because everybody was trying to compare and when they're you know theorizing like oh what happened in wanda Vision? and they focused it all on wanda they didn't have that you know big mephisto bad guy thing everything was just nodded towards and but this one they just came right at us with it. yeah yeah it was very uh i thought it was very surprising um because you know, I didn't think they'd actually show Jonathan Majors as Kang or, or some former Kang or a mashup of He Who Remains, Immortus, Nathaniel Richards. I thought he would be teased and in in implied. Maybe hear his voice. Maybe have like Ravana do some shout out to him or something like that. But I never thought they would do this in, in the series. And it was actually a surprising change and twist. And I can't wait to see more from Jonathan Majors. I thought he absolutely killed it. Uh, Jason and, uh, yeah, had, had the greatest... Uh, uh, analogy today or, or comparison of Jonathan Majors today as he remains and you called him what? Oh yeah, so yeah, no, I was actually I can't take full credit, Grant helped me with that one too, <laughs> it, I was getting the biggest Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka vibes out of him like just his, uh, the whole demeanor, everything the way he was, you know, speaking his back and forth, his attitude is just that crazy but completely in control it was spot on, that's all I could think 
I think that that kind of craziness, that kind of he'd gone loopy, hadn't he? He'd yeah. been sort of there on his own for so long, a little bit like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. You know, he'd been secluded. He kind of kept himself to himself to control everything that was going on in his little world. And um, yeah, uh, he who remains had done the same thing, hadn't he? He'd kind of kept himself in that castle with all his books and you know knowing exactly what was going to happen. So I think he'd. He definitely got loopy. Um, so I also that... talk, talking about vibes of, of other things. I also got huge. I'm big Matrix fan. Um, you know, you can slate the oh. second two <laughs> as much as you want, but there's some great moments in there. Um, but I also got Ar- Neo going to see the architect. Yes, yes, that exact same thing. You know, Absolutely. the architect. I didn't exactly pick up on it at going. first, but after you had mentioned it, Andy, I was like, oh, that's that. I could definitely see that afterwards. Yeah, it so was if, that uh... whole sort of thing, you know. So if he who remains is uh, Willy Wonka, does that make the TVA of the Oompa Loompas? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Owen Wilson doing one of the little Oompa Loompas. Yeah, <laughs> but but this whole series had different vibes. You know, for the longest time we kept saying we kept saying you know Wizard of Oz, I and mean, we we kind of got the Wizard of Oz moments with the the timekeepers at the at the TVA. Um, but as we're talking today too, I was thinking this show was kind of like an Alice in Wonderland type of show, right? Because mm-hmm. Think of Loki as Alice and, and the TVA and, and how far down the rabbit hole he's, he's going to go with them, right? Mm. Yeah, um, there's some at, fantastic at the the inspirations. Episode, yeah, and at the end of the episode, when he goes back to the TVA with everything that happened and it's a, a new timeline or they got reset type of thing, you know, he's going further down that rabbit hole. And he's, I tell you, I tell you, talking about talking about references and influences and and things like that, and obviously where they've got their inspiration from for parts of this story. Um, I tell you what, I got when he went back to the TVA, especially when he looked up at the big, um, what looks the like Jonathan there. Majors Kang. as yeah. Kang. Yeah, um, I got um, Planet of the Apes. Yes, huge. Yes, absolutely. Just that Planet of the Apes. Last you know, remains of what civilization is, and there's Majors or Kang. You know, yep. just standing there above it all big very good shout i like yeah, that just turns up. yeah yeah that's it yeah exactly yeah it turns up and he's like what's going on you know this isn't and this I is love, what I, I, i'm dying to know what iteration of king that is because yes. the statue you know, look close like the statue only he's like smirking you know and i was can't really to make out which outfit he's wearing in it i but think well, it, it, it did look like he had his kang outfit on it had yeah. like he had the, the, the half yeah, exactly. circular he had the belt on and speaking of smirking, I know I'm jumping ahead here in, in the in the in the episode, but just think before or, or when he got stabbed by Sylvie, you know, it's almost like he baited her into killing him because he smirked, he winked at her, and then he goes, "I'll see you soon." Mm. Oh, so, exactly. Yeah, well, that that's was, a, that's that the thing. I, I'd love to, he who remains, like Loki had said when he was saying it's a you know the movie saying that he he knows everything. He's planned this all, and he has. You know, you lived that long through that many lives, that many timelines and stuff. This is all going according to his plan. And it kind of goes back to the theory I had, you know, that was originally with Renslayer, where it's just kind of like, you know, where I was expecting her to, you know, talk to him somehow and just be like, all right, we're ready for phase two. They, you know, they're falling for it, you know, or whatever, you know, yeah. along those lines. Yeah, yeah speak, I was... speaking of uh, theories, I was, <laughs> I got, I was partial right because. He Who Remains was kind of a mashup of He Who Remains, Immortus, and Nathaniel Richards. You know, I had the Immortus part right, but I th- figured it'd be a Loki. Like I said, I'm still shocked that. I think, yeah. I'm yeah, glad no, it wasn't. I'm glad it wasn't. Down. I'm glad it wasn't a Loki, if I'm yes. honest, because we kind of got that reveal in the fifth episode, didn't yep. we? We kind yeah, of exactly. all, we already got that, and we well we had it at it twice already. We had it with Sylvia herself, and then we had it again in the at the end of the. Well, uh, at the end of the fourth episode, obviously with the the after credits, yes. and then we had it obviously See, in the why, fifth episode. That, that's why I was thinking that they weren't going to show Kang at all, and I was thinking there's going to be more to it. Nod because episode five was so fan service, so Easter egg heavy that I was like, guys, they're giving us all this for so the last episode. They're going to just focus solely on Loki and you know wrap his story up, you know, put a little bow on that. But they completely zigged when I thought they were going to zag. It's insane. Mm. I love it. And, and I agree of, with you, Andy. I'm, I'm glad it was. I, I'm glad they went this route. And speaking of uh, zigs, you know, Marvel pulled the fast one because in one of the previews, we saw Loki, what it looked like to be on as King Loki on the Asgardian throne. And we got none of that in the episode. So Marvel pulled a fast one on us again. I, I would, you know where I was? I was expecting that to crop up. You know, when Miss Minutes come in and before they met, um, he who remains, Miss yeah. Minutes what, was saying, You think, it, you were, yeah, she's no, she, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, that was funny. Yeah, she turned around, she said, Oh, you can have anything you want. And I thought what she might do was somehow 
maybe make a little projection and show Loki what he could have got, <laughs> well, i.e. Okay, being well, King yeah, of Asgard. Good point. So I thought, I thought that's where that was going to... Because I was waiting for that whole scene to come in for the whole episode, and it never did. So I was wondering, where would that have been? And I mean, it wouldn't be the first time that um, Marvel Studios have put something in trailers that's that's not yep. come off. In the yeah, of the Infinity War. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, Infinity War with the Hulk. That was yeah. probably the biggest oh, one I can remember when they're all running and the Hulk's yep. behind them. I mean, even that running scene didn't happen did it not not like not, that no nope. did it no, not at that. So, and it was it didn't just not happen it didn't happen at all like yeah. that. so um obviously we've had whole scenes that have just not been included um that they've obviously recorded and spent a lot of time doing the cgi for well, that's, and the that's a lot of money you know yeah, yeah. I mean, so, it's almost like they recorded just for the trailer yeah yeah well they could have done or obviously i mean would they have known about a season two at that time Maybe, maybe not. You know, I, on the popularity. They, I, mean, I think uh, I don't think it was, you know, they stamped it that yes, we're doing 100 percent season two, but I think the plans were all right, let's try for season two. And you know, it was they they think so far down the line and so far ahead, they're so detailed with that stuff, it was definitely in their minds and it was definitely on whiteboards, you know. Yeah. So let's have a so, thing. So wait, us. real quick though, speaking of season two, that, that's one of the new things for this Loki episode. So we did see in the closing credits. There is going to be a season two of Loki, so we're going to probably get more Sylvie story. Going to see Loki. Going to see more ties in. Just wondering when we're going to see that season. Is it going to be next year or twenty twenty three? Well, what I'm wondering about it is the story of it. Is it going to pick up and follow this same route, the same story arc, or are they going to do a thing where every season of it is just going to be following Loki on different adventures and you know different stories? That's interesting. I, I guess, yeah. Interesting I guess we're, I guess it depends on the timing because is this going to become before or after Quantum Mania? Well, here we go. So let's just have a. I'm just having a little quick look at my little um, uh, list of of projects. So obviously next year we've got uh, Doctor Strange uh, in March. Um, we've got Thor: Love and Thunder uh, in May. We've got uh, Wakanda Forever in July, and then we've got the Marvels in November. So those are our four features. Then we've got. Uh, at some point throughout 2022, we've got Moon Knight, we've got She-Hulk, and we've got Secret Invasion. They're the ones that have been said that they're coming out in 2022. So we've had four TV series this year, oh, or we would have, uh, yeah. we would, we would have had uh, five. Yeah, actually five, including What If. Uh, no, hold well on. We will have had six, including What If. We've had One Division, Falcon, oh, yeah, Soldier, right. Loki, yep. What If, uh, Miss Marvel, and, and Hawkeye. Hawkeye. So we would have actually had six. So in regards to TV shows or Disney Plus shows, should I say? Next year is looking a little bit slim compared to this year, but obviously we had the the, the delays, so yes. it could we could see it next year. The following year, I mean, we don't know about what's coming on in 2023, but obviously we do know early part of 2023 in February we've got Quantum Mania, and we've also got Guardians in 2023 at some point as well. Guardians three, and then two other features. And as far as TV is concerned, we don't know. But obviously, there's a lot of projects like Ironheart, Armor Wars, yep. et cetera, et cetera. Well, the, so the thing that know. I'm wondering about, like with the storyline, going back to like what you said, Andy, is like, did they plan for a season two? Because if they didn't, then it's going to be hard to fit him his and, season two back yep. into the Kang storyline. Because, that, you know, like I said, they plan everything out. So they've got all these movies, all these shows connecting and stuff already laid out, already storyboarded. So, you know, if they did just kind of pick this up off of popularity, you know, hey, we can do a season two. It's going to be hard to weave it back in to what they already have laid out. And yeah. I would say, I would say, I reckon they have. I reckon, I don't think they've thought about it because... I think they've gone off the popularity of it and I think yes. they'll make it about a different story. I, I can't see it. They've announced, but then again, I suppose they wouldn't announce season two at the, before season one's even aired, would they? Yeah, they wouldn't. So no, I don't know. Yeah, because then we would expect, you know, cliffhangers. And yep. Jason, 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 stop moving your <laughs> microphone around so much. I know, I got to stand still. Yeah, it's going nuts. It's going nuts. Um, go on, Jar so uh, I don't know what you was going to bring up, Jaren, but I was going to go on to the, let's talk about this kind of multiverse, the different versions of, of, of He Who Remains Kang, whoever you want to call it. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, before we get there, though, there. Yeah. Yeah, as go far on. as timing wise, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to fit it in before Quantum Mania and maybe no, go more into where the TVA actually is if it's tied to the quantum realm, kind of lead into quantum mania, maybe because we know Kang, we know a version of Kang is going to be in quantum mania. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if they, they did the timing around then. Another thing, too, since you brought up Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, another thing in the news is that Loki, um, Tom Hiddleston, is going to be in the Multiverse of Madness. And I so hope we, we get a picture like I posted today in the group um, where we have uh, Wanda, Scarlet Witch, um, Doctor Strange, and Loki all fighting together trying to fend off some big bad. Yeah. Do you know what I was? Yeah, I would as well. I was really pleased um, last night um, when I watched uh, the, the finale because I was thinking that this could potentially be the last we saw of Tom Hiddleston, at yeah. least at least for a while. Anyway, I mean, I don't think I think I said to somebody to, today, like you know, never say never. Um, you know, we're talking. Uh, to, I think we were talking about um, Scarlett Johansson. I said, and they was like, oh, we're, we're not going to see her again. And I was like, don't rule anything out, but. I know what they mean. Um, and I thought we wouldn't see Tom Hiddleston. I thought this was going to be it for him. But I'm really I, pleased. I was, worried like about, I was worried about that, too. You know, I mean, like you said, you know, I, I'm sure we'll always get him as cameo here and there. But I thought this was the end of him starring in, you know, big feature main character type of seeing him, you know. Looks like it's not. So that's yeah. great. Um, so, so okay, so let's, let's, let's dive into this kind of multiverse um, theory and these different versions of... Um, this of let's just say of Jonathan Major's character character because there's still this kind of little bit of was it Amortus was it was it he who remains was everyone's calling him Kang and it's like no he's not Kang yet um, and I know that uh, uh, Jason wanted to give somebody a shout out today for a no hold on who was it one of you wanted to give somebody yeah, it was, a shout it, out for yeah a so Jarian yeah yeah so Monty in the group um, posted a great post explaining the different uh, variations of Kang. From Mortis to Iron Lad to um, to Kang himself to uh, to Roma Tut to Scarlet and you know all of them he posted out there. So if you ever read that post, it, it's a long post, but it's good detail on the different versions great, of Kang. And, yes. and, he keeps, and he simplifies it too. Yep. You know, he, he makes it very easy for new you know new readers and stuff to be able to follow along. Because I mean, back when I was kind of doing the, the character breakdowns, you can get crazy you know <laughs> with all the info and all the years of stories that they have and especially with a character like kang yep. if you listed off all those names he has literally been pretty much almost to everyone in the mcu yes. at one point or another yep so I yeah think it's well, definitely a rabbit hole <laughs> just <laughs> touching on hole. what you said there uh, jason in regards to um the way that monty has broken that down that post uh, it's really useful for people that don't know the comic background um there's been a couple of posts on the page today and i was speaking to a friend of mine um and we've, we've uh, he's a big mcu fan big movie fan um uh, obviously I'm a big MCU fan, um, but this guy's not um, a comic reader, never really read the comics, a little tiny bit of comic knowledge, but not basic. really. Yeah. Those. Yeah. Very, very basic. I mean, I wouldn't class myself in the same league as you guys for, uh, in regards to comic knowledge, but certainly got a decent comic knowledge. Um, <laughs> however, we talk about, is it better to know a bit of this base knowledge and have that understanding yes. and then watch the programs? Or is it better to not have that base understanding and watch the programs see, because you yeah. don't know what to expect? And see, that's actually perfect because like, especially it's, it's situational because especially with like Kang, I've had a lot of yep. members ask me, oh, what's his backstory, this and that, where does he fit in the comics? How are they playing that over? What stories of his are they going to use? And with the, with the character like him, it's almost better. I tell them, like, don't bother. Don't read into it. Like, just get the basic of, you know, that he was an iteration. He's, he can be multiple people. And let you see what the MCU does with it. Go off of their story of him. You know, because mm. otherwise it's, I mean, I'm a fairly veteran. I'm a pretty good, knowledgeable comic reader myself. And it still confuses me. Yes. Like crazy. Yeah. Like, so. yeah, there's a lot there with Kang. And, and one thing that uh, Adam from the group as well, we were talking about earlier today is that, if you don't want to go into the comics, you know, since you're, you you watch Loki and obviously you have Disney Plus, go watch the cartoons. Um, yes. There's some good series out there. I, I put a post in the group today as well about Avengers Assemble, Earth Mightiest Hero, Heroes, um, X-Men Evolution. There's like several different series on Disney Plus of the cartoons that have stories of Kang. Um, in it. So, life. yep. So go go watch them and they have other stuff too as well. Um, with I mean, other like, stories like, like Secret Invasion, too, like the Lego movie ones. Yep, they have. He's in those a bunch yep. that you had mentioned. Kang as well as in Lego movie games. Uh, in the movies also, 
Um, but uh, yeah, even like Seeker Invasion that's coming up, there's a whole a couple episodes on there and other things that are coming up too as well. So in this downtime... Because we, we've mentioned it before where they, you know, MCU might be pulling a lot of source yeah. material out of their animated stuff and their games and everything, yep. like how the Star Wars have started doing too. So. So, and the animated so, stuff is pretty good too. So go out there and, and definitely check it out. So talking about the game, actually, um, the Avengers game, the one that came out recently, um, I haven't I haven't played it. I'm, I used to be a huge game of not so much now. I don't have I don't have the time. Um, <laughs> but apparently, now this person I was talking to, my friend I was talking to, the one who's not into uh, comics, um, he's heavily into the game. Loves a bit of gaming, um, and he said the the main two villains in there are Taskmaster and Abomination. Yes, and he said a. Uh, and because and and then he brought up the fact that he said Taskmaster because he he uh, without ruining anything in in Black Widow for anybody that hasn't seen it yet and now listening to this he was like oh Taskmaster was different in the in the game to in the in the movie uh, and, and yeah, let's yeah. not let's not get stuck into that now because yeah. we've, we've, we've dealt with, yeah we've dealt with that but um and like there might be people that are listening to this that still haven't seen Black Widow so we don't want to you know talk too much about that but my point is is that they've brought in these two characters and made them the main villain obviously we know Abomination is is uh, showing his face in Shang Chi, so I wonder whether they kind of did that on purpose, um, and they're oh, trying to sort of cross medium all their things. Well, um, that's exactly. Yeah. They definitely do that, and you know that's a big part of you know getting their sales. You know, if some yeah. if they're going to be bringing in a character into the movies, it's going to be popular and stuff. They're going to want them to feature into the games, or you know, even I've seen it happen with the comics. You know, in the newer comics that are coming out. They're starting to put some of the characters who are, you know, from the movies more prominently back in the comics. It's, yeah, I mean, we spoke system. about we spoke about the fact that up until about three years ago, the Fantastic Four were dead, and then they yep. brought them all back recently, and exactly. it's no coincidence that now they've got the rights back to make movies for them. Yep. So yeah, that happens. Anyway, I think we've digressed a little bit there. Let's get back to let's get back to Loki. So we've got all these different versions. Yeah, yeah, of, back of on Kang. Jack. Yeah, back on Jack. So we've got all these different versions of of Kang or Nathaniel yep. Richards or whoever you want to say. It. They're all playing off against each other. Now I kind of like the way. So in the comics, correct me if I'm wrong, lads. But basically, it was just one person in the same universe, but over multiple different times. So he was just the same person, but just at different times on the timeline. Yeah, am I right in saying that? Uh, I mean, yes and no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. this, yeah, this is this is one of those things with King where it's uh, it gets crazy and confusing because like how people are saying, like you had mentioned, nobody you know wants to really call him Kang right now because he's technically not, but he actually is. Mm. So like King, because he always you know, is. He always, yes. It's, yeah, it's it's strange. It, it gets really intricately, you know, confusing. Okay, so now, okay, so but now in Loki, this isn't a single person from one timeline who's living in different times. This is different variants yes. of the same. Like, yeah. so this is the variant thing that we've yes. been seeing the whole um, like with the multiple series Lokis that we're showing up. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Or even so Ravana's this, exactly. this episode too. And Ravana, yep. yeah. Yep. So this is the exact same thing as what we've seen. So I quite like how they've kind of almost taken away the confusion. Yes, yeah. they've taken exactly. away this confusion of like, is it the same person? But is he from the future? Is he from the past? Does he live in the future and go back to the past and then come back to the future again? And then, and it's like, where is he on the timeline? It's like, and see, you that's why I, that. like I went with new, new, uh, new fans and stuff when they're asking about Kang. That's a big reason why I'm saying like, just don't, don't bother reading too much into him. Yep. Let's see what the MCU does because they are, they're going to simplify it to some extent because they want, you know, new fans to be able to follow along. So it's, and I, I like, think I like the, the direction they're going. And I, I think yeah, on the sense. episode, uh, he who remains did a good explanation that was really simple um, uh, of Kang and the different variants and that kind of stuff. There was a pretty good explanation there when, when he was in the Citadel, explain who he was and what happened with the multiverse wars and that kind of stuff to Loki and Sylvie. Yeah, I think that was really, really well done. And and I think, but I think it was also really well done. Um, I mean, and. <laughs> even my wife understood exactly what was going on. Like she was like, Oh no, I get it because yep. we've seen this theme of the variants from different you like multiverses, different universes, different timelines come up already. So it's, we already know about the fact that one person can be, you know, can have loads of different variants and yep. that's just where they've gone with Kang uh, or Jesus. I need to stop saying it, but yeah, 
you know, with that person. And I think that's really good. I think that's a really nice way. Like, it's, like what Jason was saying, they've simplified it. And I think that works really well. Exactly. And, kind of- and that's the thing. They don't want to alienate, you know, new viewers and new fans. They, you know, they want to be more inclusive to people, especially with a character like this. You know, it's hard to follow along. So they want to make sure everybody can enjoy it. Yeah, and we know that uh, that he's popping up in Quantum Mania, but I don't think that's going to be like the 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 big bad of the uh, Phase Four, Phase Five coming up. I think that's going to be a variant um, that we're going to see in Quantum. I Mania. think I think that'll be the one that ends up turning into the big bad further well, poss- down the line. Possibly, or they could do a play on the Council of Kings and going back, and you know, the one King, the Conqueror, where. King goes back and defeats other Kangs, or he manipulates the Avengers in some cases to defeating some of those variants of him. And then he basically destroys the council of Kang. So I could see them going that route where we've seen King pop up several times over phase uh, four and phase five. Yeah. Um, until right. we, we get that final one big bag. King is like, okay, now I'm going to conquer the Avengers after he yeah. manipulated them, destroy the council and that kind of stuff. That's what, that's where I'm going with it. I reckon we'll see Jonathan Majors again between now and uh, Quantum Mania. Yeah. I think, we, oh, I, think we, I think we might even see him another two or three times, in fact, yes. as different versions. And I've got to, I'm going to, I'm going to well, put it out there. It's I'm just gonna, what version are we going to see him in? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to say it now. I reckon we'll see Ramata in Eternals. Yes. So, okay. That's- yeah, I like. I can see that. So speaking of, of Ramatut and the Eternals, are we going to get some kind of Apocalypse X-Men Easter egg then also as well? Because Ramatut is tied to Apocalypse. Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, he is, but I don't know if that's that's a heavy story to get into and to open up right now, especially coming off of Fox's, you know, Age of Apocalypse or whatever there. So I don't... But we know the mutants are coming. We know there's a there's a plan for a show or a movie coming. So I wonder if they're going to start laying some more Easter eggs uh, leading to mutants. I think with this as well, with the show, the way they've opened up this the multiverse now, I think they're coming wholesale. I've always thought that they might drip feed us in and yep. there might be something that happens, but that it's clear what's going to happen. They're just going to... And I don't mean necessarily the ones, the, the Fox, the X-Men that we've already seen. No, yeah. We, might, yeah. we might get a couple of cameos or something, but I don't think that's going to be the team that's going to go forward in the MCU. No. No. I think, but I do think we're going to get our whole team go, boom, there they go. That's the X-Men. They're already done what they've done. We're seeing them now as they are right now in this story. And then maybe in the future, they will go back and show you classic stories Yes. Um, like Days of Future Past, like you know these other stories, um, the, the the Phoenix. I, I just, I just, I just hope they stay away. From so, say, say, that. say that again, Jason. Didn't quite hear you. I, I, said, I, I, hope, I know what you said. Yeah, I just, I hope they stay away from the uh, Doc Phoenix saga. Yes. I'm so tired of seeing. Leave that it alone. There's so many other great stories, you know. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and I think that's where we'll get the X-Men versus the Avengers as well when they yes. bring them over wholesale. Um, so, um, okay, looking to, to, uh, again, bring it back to Loki again. Um, do you know, there's a couple of things that I just that I just noticed and I thought, oh, that was quite a, a cute little nod and, and a couple of little little bits that I think just tidied a couple of bits up. First thing was the pen. Ah, yes. Yeah. The, the pen, the Franklin D. Roosevelt High School <laughs> pen. We was all going, oh, well, that could be this person. I've been yeah. dying about that pen since the first episode. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. So now we know that it was it was a, a Runeslayer as uh, she was a, 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 a teacher a head teacher or yeah. a headmaster, mistress or whatever it was at a, a high school. And that's where the pen came from. So um, that was a nice little way just to sort of, and they focused on it in the, previously on bit as well yep. i'm sure they did like second right. or third episode where i kept thinking it, it led to peggy carter but i was completely wrong on that one yeah yeah, no, yeah. It, was a, so, it was a nice pickup though to notice the pen and to see its importance that we were going to get something about it later on so that was a good eye on that there you go yeah there you go really like that um i tell you what else i really liked i really liked that he was eating an apple that was and, great yeah and that, that was a little bit of a i don't know whether that was a little bit of a nod to the apple that we saw in dr strange when he was ah oh, well that's, nice. that's what i was thinking i've seen some people joking about it it's like you know an apple a day keeps the doctor away you know and, like dr strange like <laughs> and, and, and speaking yeah. of, of dr strange you know remember the ancient one's words back then about the multiverse and multiple realities but also too didn't the inside of the citadel especially the windows wasn't it had a very sanctum like vibe feel to it 
Oh, absolutely. I don't think that was a mistake or yeah. a coincidence no. at all. No, and it's, the, it's definitely, yeah. And then the other thing I noticed, too, was that when they went to, like, the outside view of the Citadel and the office at the top where they were at, the top of it, the orange light with the, with the, with the roof there, was it just me or does that look like the end of a baton yep. as well? Yeah, it did. It looked like the end of one of the pruning sticks. Yep. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah the the yeah, glow yeah, part. Yeah, yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I'd then, uh, was a, go, go ahead, go on. No, no go, go ahead. On. Okay. I was say... <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's like when you get in each other's way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go that way. I'll go that way. No, yeah, um, I'll go right. this way. No, sorry. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going. It's me. Go for it. Right. Okay. So um when they walked in, just before they I think just before they the door opened, um, there was well, there was three statues, but there was actually four statues. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. One of them was knocked out. Oh, was that what you was gonna talk about? Yeah, yes. great minds, great <laughs> minds think alike. So there was so there was three statues. Could that be the three timekeepers? Were they originally real people and then uh Nathaniel Richards, he remains, whoever, has replaced them with uh androids. Um, and then there was a fourth statue that had crumbled over. So was that the can now correct me well, you can bring some light the on fourth, it. There was a the fourth, fourth time keeper. Was, yeah, the exile yes, one. Who was exiled. The he who remains was the one who exiled him. Yep. So and there he, you go. Yep, and he exiled him to Egypt. So that's definitely going to play into this. So yes. big time. And I and Talking I of- and I think that they are going to say that the timekeepers were real. I think they're going to keep them that they did exist. Because I mean, how else would he remain come up with that idea to have three, you know, being yep. be the face and to be the front of it, you know? So Yeah, and I maybe agree. I think- and maybe that the timekeepers wherever they're at or somewhere in like the multiverse or quantum realm and Maybe that's one of the keys to defeating King at some point. I don't know. Mm. I'm just thinking out okay. loud here. Oh, okay. So they're like they're all like restoring prisons. order, you know. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, that's a big also... vibe. I, I, from the beginning of this series, I've, I've had that feeling that somebody or something is, you know, comatose almost. You know, kind yep. of being like you said, imprisoned or held back. So. Yep. So we've got talking just one last little link up there to one of the uh, variants of of, of Kang. Um, is uh, the the Ramatut again, and we did see uh, now uh, he went back to ancient Egypt in the comics. This is he went back to ancient Egypt in a spaceship that looked like a sphinx, and then we saw a sphinx in yep. episode five that had yep. been pruned, didn't we? So there was a little bit of foreshadowing there, maybe. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. And then uh, another thing too, when they're in the Citadel, when when uh, he who remains goes, we just passed the threshold. Was it just me or that sound? That was in the background that happened. Sound like almost like, like a ship was firing up, like maybe King's ship was firing up in that moment when they crossed that threshold. Yeah. It was kind of weird. I went back after you mentioned it. I went yeah. back and, and, and tried to listen close, and it was it was it was almost like a rev up of like some type engines. Of boosters. Or yeah. Engines. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll have yeah. to check that out. And the other one you were talking about about the, the glass breaking sound. Yes, glass or ice cracking with the timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Which it just thought, like, yeah, if you look, you know, the timeline, the way they show it, where it's spite is off, yeah. stuff, that's what it sounded like to me. It was like when I, you know, spider yep. glasses. You know. Mm. I, um, uh, I, that moment when he said, um, that he doesn't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I thought that was a great moment. I mean, I knew exactly what he was going to say, but I thought um, Jonathan Major's delivery of those few lines there was beautiful because he, I knew what he was going to say. He was going to say, I, he knew, like, you knew what happened as well yes. at that time. But he was just like, hey, I knew what was happening until about, seven seconds ago and it was just that beautiful delivery See, yes. that was that's one of the ones yeah. that gave me those big willy wonka type vibes there the way he yeah. delivered that you know just yeah because he was like waiting uh, to say like, category yeah, yeah. And, and the, like he was just winging it you yeah know? and his, his delivery and the way he carries himself i want to see more majors like as soon as possible because i'm already loving him in in the mcu yeah, I think, and yeah. I think we're I, I want see the him. Council of Kings just so I could see him just all over. The yeah, with himself. Yeah, interact. Yeah, with that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, almost like Eddie Murphy vibes. Yeah. you know, playing in uh, five different <laughs> yeah. characters yeah. at the same time. And the clumps or, or Norbert and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be brilliant because I think uh, yeah, obviously I you know these different variants are going to have different personalities um and and act a little bit different so that person or that character that we saw last night we're probably not going to see unless we get that kind of yes scene well that's like what you had mentioned it in the um the chat earlier andy where you were like oh majors is going to kill this role and i was like pluralize that (laughs) yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, no, I think he is. I definitely think he is. So um, looking at how, um, I just want to link this to obviously our next, we've got four weeks now, or less than four weeks now, but till our next MCU offering, which is the What If show. Um, uh, it was only a few days ago, uh, I think I was probably one of the ones sitting again. Now, I don't think it's going to have much relevance. I think it's just going to be random ideas that they're going to chuck out there. Well, actually, now it seems like that's not quite true. I say not quite true. It wasn't. <laughs> it was just a guess from me. Um, but it's not right. It wasn't a correct guess. And it looks like it's actually going to have a little bit more um, of a role to play in how we go forward. Yes. Um, and there's been a bit of rumours about that. Some words been said, Jarian, am I well, right? Yeah, well, well Tom Hiddleston has, uh, has basically kind of hinted and said some things and some articles out there that, that what if will have some imp- implications going forward. So going to be exciting to see. And, and the nice thing with what if is that they can float things and see if the audience is like them or not and then bring them into the MCU or not or just see how things tie. Um, exactly. I, that goes I, back I, to me saying, like, with them opening up the multiverse, they're just doing all the stuff and safety net themselves. Yep. So they give them all, themselves the opportunity to just get wild and creative. If it doesn't work, hey, reel it in. It was a one shot. You know, it's a different timeline. If it does work, boom, bring it into canon. Yep. You know, and the, great, the, t- the, great timing as well. Great yeah. timing of the release mm-hmm. of what if. Yes, exactly. They're not. They're doing things on purpose with that schedule there and that release. And there was there was one thing I thought we talked about with Captain Carter. I thought someone said that we might see her. In Doctor Strange, two multiverse. Of yeah, Venice, there was a rumor. There's a rumor. I heard there's, about that. Yeah. There's yeah. a rumor of that. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some of those elements from What If in yeah. Doctor Strange, two exactly. and No Way Home, as kind of like there's like a glimpse. So you know, like yeah. um, where you see like. I, I'm not saying this will happen, but you know, you see Doctor Strange's portals, and then almost yeah. like yeah. the other side of it, there's something going on, and yeah. there's like, oh look, there's I mean Peggy Carter as you know Captain Carter, or there's yeah. you know. Um, to Charla as uh, Star Lord, Lord. Yeah. yeah, that's it, and and just little glimpses of of real of live action of what we've seen in What If, um, but I think that um, the What If uh, series is going to be. I think that's going to. I think what happened last, yeah. yeah, and I, but I think what happened last night is going to make a lot more people interested in what if. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, absolutely. That was a great, you know, foreshadowing of what's to come and what, what you know, we can all expect from that. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I was. Go ahead. No, go on, man. No, no, Your turn, Mister. It's all yours. <laughs> yeah, you two are dancing. <laughs> again, we did it again. All right, okay. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, I was just, I was probably. Don't get me wrong. I was looking for. I'm looking forward to what if, and I was looking forward to what if before yesterday. But I'm looking forward to it even more now. I was one of those people. You know, I'm now. Yeah. I'm now like, oh, this is going to be really. Yeah, I was. Fun. I was looking forward to it because I was hoping this would be the case. Yes, uh, okay. I, I didn't. I didn't predict it or anything, but I was just like, I, this is something I'd always wanted. You know, I wanted the connectivity through it. I wanted that just insane chaos of it, and so I was. I wanted this for a while. <laughs> I, I'll say it because I, I did think it would lead to stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, you know, you did. No, you did. To be fair, you know, on our last episode, you was the one going. No, I think he's going to have more to do with and stuff, then, and I was like, no, it ain't. <laughs> it's going to be nothing. It's going to be throwaway. But um, no, I'm glad that he has because I think that will give it more gravitas. So so um, so back back to the Loki episode. Uh, Jack makes it mean a little more. Well, let's go back to Miss Minutes and Ravana, right? There's oh, okay. definitely something sinister with Ravana or Miss Minutes because I oh, yeah. I think she wasn't working with he who remains. That was sketchy. And yes, I think she's working with the actual bad king because she kind of was, you know, well, one of the bad. Kings. Yeah, one of the bad kings because I don't think she was really protecting he who remains, more of keeping an eye on him. And keeping an eye of what's going on because think about when Ravana asked her for that information. Um, Ravana goes to her, This is not what I wanted, but she goes, It's what you need. And then the last thing we see of Ravana is her going through a portal and saying, I'm gonna go in search of those who who want free got, will. Yeah, you know? I'm gonna go in search of free will. Yeah, yeah it's almost like yeah, she, in that moment she turned into Ravana the Terminatrix. Yeah. Anyone else with yeah, that vibe? Yeah, I I I do you know what I didn't. Um, but now come to think of it, yeah, there's definitely something sketchy going on there. When she gave her that information, she said, that's not what I wanted. She, yeah, and she said, that's what yeah. you need. That, yeah, now come to think of it. the way she delivered it, that it was, you know, there was so undertones in that where, you know, mm. she meant more than she said with it, you know. Yeah, and I, and I hope we see more Miss Mance because I really enjoyed that that take. Oh, I love it. Tara Strong is amazing. Yeah, so I could listen sense. to Tara Strong's voices all day long. It'd be interesting to see, like, where Ravona's gone. Like where yeah. would you? I mean, any guesses? I don't know. 
meet up with the Kang yeah. variant, I guess, you know, possibly. Yeah. Or maybe maybe she went back to her her home or her to see her father, maybe. I don't know. Maybe yeah, that's interesting. Maybe it's meant as tied to her father because her father had kind of had that, you know, wasn't correct from wrong, Jason, but wasn't the whole thing with her father that King was trying to impress her because he was in love with the, with her father type of thing. So maybe she yeah, yeah. Went, it, went home. he was he was waging war on her planet, her timeline, and um he sp- pretty much spared her father and stuff to impress her. Like, yep. look at how powerful I am, but also how merciful I am type of situation. And so that was kind of the spark originally in the comics, at least when they, you know, she actually fell for him. So, yeah. So what, she, so what if in that case then, so what if Miss Minutes gave her that information to kind of give her her memory back? Cause we know everyone at the TVA has some kind of mind wipe done or some kind of, you know, well, that was, that was the one thing I wanted to pop in too real quick. Yeah. Remember the, the conversation we were having under Mark Relevant's post when, you know, we were kind of theorizing maybe Kronos and stuff and making yep. those ties with the Eternals. The whole mind wipe thing is giving very much vibes of um, when Sprite did it to the Eternals. Yes. Which we know that that's going to be a part of their movie, their storyline, that, you know, that's why they've been gone for so long is they had their memories wiped. So I wonder if they'll eventually pull that connection, you know. And speaking of yes. the Eternals and Mind Wipe, is the the multiverse exploding and everything that happened in this series is why they're back now. That it maybe freed them from wherever they were stuck or or yeah, brought their memories exactly. back and bringing them back. That was my idea. I thought that's why I thought it was going to be Kronos towards the end thing because yep. I thought you know Loki will defeat him, the Mind Wipe will you know open up, and then that's why they're coming back. That's why they're able to you know remember who they are and all that. Yeah, but it's yeah, not because I'll of the just... aftermath of Endgame or, or Thanos. It's because of the multiverse exploding and the, all this stuff going on. And, and speaking of that, I want to read something from one of our uh, group members that uh, is going to play into this as well. So let me pull this up here. So Patrick Walker had a post today um, in, in one of the threads in our, in our group. And it said, what I like most of this storyline so far is that every movie before in the MCU was all part of who of who uh, he who remains plan. From Thanos snap to Avengers time travel and dropping to the Tesseract. Now I wonder what Doctor Strange saw in Infinity War when he was using the Time Stone. How many Kang victories did he see or how many times was he pruned while using the Time Stone? Hmm, interesting. I mean, so how many That's times... interesting. Yeah. How far would how far would Doctor Strange gone forward though? Surely would he have only gone forward to the end of the war with Thanos? But did he though? But did, did did he did he go even further farther forward to see what happens in the aftermath? Because we all know that you know them doing something can, can have ramifications going forward. So did he not only see? <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tony Just snapping. Just seeing that they beat Thanos isn't an actual win. Yes. Yeah, because you know that could, like you said, the ramifications of that. So he would have to look further down to make sure that that win was a, right. a huge uh, win. Yes. It would, and universe. it would, and the win would, the win would stick. Yes. Yeah, I saw exactly. a fanta- I yeah. saw a great post. I saw a great post earlier. It just made me laugh. And basically, all it was was um, Tom Hiddleston was Thor and uh, Chris Hemsworth was Loki, and they'd kind of swapped their sizes as well, like at Photoshop. And it basically just said, um, "Time travel and moves a chair." And then in the yeah. past, I love those, those, those memes are good. Really good. It just yeah. cracked me up. I thought well, it was really it. funny. But that's that tiny little thing. You know, you see that in, um, I'm sure there's a the Simpsons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say episode. that. Yeah, that's it. You change one little thing and everything changes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be, um, I, I, I agree. I think this is probably why the Eternals have, have sort of stepped up. You know, they've, they've something's happened. Well, this has happened and they can feel it or sense it or I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, going to be interesting to see. Because what else does this unlock besides with the timeline exploding everything. and everything came coming does you know we got galactus we got doom you know who else is is waiting behind the in the shadows waiting to come back out as well yeah i'll tell you what this also poses the questions of um where does uh, so we we obviously i think eternals it kind of doesn't really matter. I don't think it, it it could affect them massively. It might not affect them at all. And I don't think it will matter for that movie. It won't feel out of place. Yeah. No Way Home, obviously, we can yes. see where that's going. Do- Multiverse of Madness, we can see where that's going. Yes. So if we look at the other couple of projects or a few projects that we've got in between now and then, um, we've got Shang-Chi, we've got Miss Marvel, we've got Hawkeye. So how, do, how are they going to fit in now? Like what's... Where are they going to be set at different times? Are, are they going to be set in different universes, different timelines? Um, I don't know. It, it seems like they're 
they're almost caught up in the middle of this big thing. And how are they going to? Well, that's what I think. I think you had mentioned it on one of our previous episodes where, you know, how are the more street level guys going to fit into these cosmic threats and stuff? And I think they are going to split it off and, you know, focus on all these different events happening. So, you know, you get the street level heroes like, you know, Shang-Chi and stuff, and you'll see them dealing with, you know, fighting bad guys who are taking the opportunity because more cosmic heroes like Doctor Strange are off fighting Kang and stuff. So I think they'll all have their own pocket. And, you know, they'll just try to weave it all together in the end. And, and that's why I think with the, the whole Kang thing and the different variants of Kang is that we'll see Kang pop up at different times in the next couple of phases um, until they get to that that big that big showdown kind of like uh, in game. Um, but also, too, that's going to make yeah. for, for different uh, teams. So we're probably going to see Thunderbolts, uh, Dark Avengers, Young Avengers, a New Avengers team. Things are, are going to split off. We're going to have the Guardians. Um, and so... You're going to see some different alignments here. Probably some more cosmic heroes, too. Um, you know, Nova at some point. Um, hopefully that... Nova. Easter, yeah, yeah. That Adam Warlock with that Easter egg that we saw in the end of Guardians 2. Um, and then, but what other bads are going to come out? I mentioned Doom and Galactus. Are we going to see Beyonder? Um, what else is going to come out of the, the woodworks here with all this going on? So there's going to be some splits. There's going to be some different uh, some different uh, fights going on at different time, maybe at the same time with, with different sets. You know, kind of it, it's almost like a chess game going forward with all these pieces uh, of the MCU now. But like one of those three D chesses. Yes. You know. Yes. Like where it's got the three different layers. Exactly. And it's like three different games <laughs> happening at once. Type. Different yeah. universes of chess. Yeah. Um, and it's yep. a question a question that I was pondering to myself, and I almost wrote it. I, I tried to write a post to put on the group. Um, but I couldn't quite type it out properly. And I thought, Do you know what? I'll save it for tonight and, um, and, and talk about it and see if it can make sense. So now, obviously, I know that the TVA kind of works outside of time and it doesn't work differently. But we know that Loki went to the TVA straight after New York. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And now he kind of alluded to it a little bit in episode five when he said it's been a weird last few days or months or how long has it been since New York? So I know and I know that time works differently. But when is does this multiverse split kind of happen at a certain point in time? That's it. Uh, yes. it, it Actually, when it happens, um, has it always Adam, happened? Adam Wooten was trying to get a actual graph going trying to figure this out this morning unfortunately it was like nine o'clock in the morning so my brain wasn't working at all but it's it's crazy to try to figure out exactly where to pinpoint this you know this instance and this you know, big thing happening yep. yes yeah that's what i'm saying like this so okay let's just let's just assume that loki has been gone from uh, his timeline so gone from new york or actually not you know because it, it was mongolia actually um, or wherever he landed in the desert, but yeah, let's assume Mongolia. that he's been, yeah, he's been gone from there for a week, right? So does that mean that the branch timeline has been going on since a week after then, or has it always been going on, or like these? Because these branch timelines turn up, and they're obviously not new; like they they've got a history. But where does our timeline, where does our universe the recognize that it started yeah, to happen? Yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, and that's, I'm, I'm still yeah. a little bit, I can't get my head around that a little bit at the moment. I think they're probably still the main No, it's, it's, it's crazy to try to wrap it around. Yeah, cause I think like what we're seeing now is still the main yeah. timeline, the the sacred one that thing is supposed to happen, um, I think. Um, but um, going forward, I'm not sure. Um, mm. It'll be interesting to see when Shang-Chi is actually supposed to happen. Is it during now? Or is it during the the five year uh, snap? Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that will give I us our first uh, our first clue. The one that yeah. kind of clicks back. The, exactly. Yeah, I think that's going to be the movie that gets us back on track. To all right, where are we? Get our photos yeah. back, and you know, be able to figure out a little bit more. Because because uh, at the moment we're still only the furthest thing we've seen along is um, uh, f- uh, far from home, isn't it? That yeah. was set. That was set nine, six not months or nine months after Endgame, something like that, wasn't it? But that's the furthest thing yeah, we've it was, seen. It was, along. Yeah. Um, so we haven't actually seen any further than that along yet, which is probably a good thing because obviously we it's given us a chance, like the real world, us a chance to catch up. 
You know, we we was in exactly. it, that was in 2023 or 2024, yeah. and we we're obviously. I mean, if we hadn't have had uh, the pandemic and been delayed with a few things, we would have still been in 2020 by the time a lot of this was released. And speaking so, of yeah. speaking of timelines, so we know that WandaVision is like basically right after the events yeah, a couple of, of, weeks. of of Endgame. Um, when is Loki? <laughs> Every time. It's we all know, the time. Yeah, we know it starts off with 2012 and going to Mongolia, but... That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. when, how long has he been there? Like, he yeah. said, time works differently. Has he been? He doesn't know. He, like I said, he makes that little joke in episode five. Like, oh, have I, is it been a couple of days? How long has it been? I don't know. You know, so it could be months. We don't know. It'd be almost funny if the way they they do that they keep Tom Hiddleston in the uh, MCU is they give him a temp pad and he just shows up through portals and random movies. Yeah. Like, I got a small oh, cameo. I would love that. Also. A small cameo. Well, that well, was actually what my answer to you, Andy, was going to be was it kind of depends on when Loki returns and, you know, what time he returns from the TVA who, there. That's, yeah, that's kind right. of where it'll put off in the time, you know. So I is just, he going to turn up and is he going to try and find somebody that, that to, to help? Like, is he going to try and I, find I, that's Doctor Strange? Yeah. Yep. You know, his first he's gonna he's gonna make a beeline for Thor, obviously. You know, so maybe Love and Thunder. Yeah, maybe Love and Thunder, or um, maybe uh, No Way Home. Maybe possibly yeah. we'll see a cameo. Think, we we definitely yeah, know maybe. Doctor Strange. Or he knows he knows about Doctor Strange. He's aware yeah. of Doctor Strange. Yeah, no, he doesn't. Maybe he'll, you know, no, he yeah, doesn't. He does. This one, no, doesn't. yeah, this one, oh, doesn't. this one doesn't. This Wait, one no, yeah, doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Well, he doesn't. No, yeah, he doesn't, because this call. is 2012, Loki. Yeah, this that was before Loki. um before uh, Ragnarok. But yeah. having said that, having said that, in that like in this last episode, he says something to Sylvie like, "I know how you're feeling. Like, I don't know how I know how you're feeling, but I know." Like it's almost like he's gone through the journey that he went through in the movies that we've seen. Somehow merged with the, with our original. Yes. Movie. Yes. Yeah, and he's kind of because it. it, it He's grown up like he's he's now even further. Yeah, what took him all those movies seemed to have taken him just this series. Series, so, you know, exactly. At that level, I, yeah. and no, I was and he's gone done. beyond that. I think yep. he's gone beyond that as well. I think he's gone beyond where we saw him uh, die in Infinity War. I think he's yep. gone far beyond that. He's 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 turned now. He's actually thinking about. <laughs> Other things, other he still kind of was thinking about himself most of the time. Where now he's actually like, hold on a minute, we need to think about this. Is this the best thing to well, do? I, think, like, I so- think it's because of the gravity of the situation. You know, he realizes how serious it is. Because I mean, that was kind of what part of it what made him change. And you know, the original Loki was because you know he knew how you know big Thanos was, and you know how situation was so intense and so serious. So it was like a wake up call for him. And I think, you know, running into the he who remains and, you know, learning about that, it kind of snapped him like this is bigger than me and my selfishness. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a couple of things here. We still need to find out about why magic doesn't work in the TVA. Right. Were those rooms in that room? So we still need to find that out Two, I think that the tie here is Wanda because we know she's searching for her boys. Right. So I wonder if there is some point where he comes across her and that's how he gets pulled into Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Got, you know, I, I, I could see that being a possibility because he's yeah. definitely going to have a tie for her with this. I yeah, mean, or, at this point, when with it, is anything magic related, she's going to be in the mix, you know? Yeah. yeah or, you, you know, hey, so. maybe she's a scroll, like what's his name said? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he said Renslayer was the scroll. <laughs> yeah. Which, you oh, know, God. yeah, I, I fell for that one, Hawaiian <laughs> and Singer, too. You know, I, I mean, who knows? <laughs> I don't, I can't see it happening, but it, it, that's another thing. I'm sitting there thinking that they seem to be playing out a lot of big storylines. Like, and I'm going, how are they going to, like, we still got this Thunderbolts thing going on yep. or what, whatever, whatever. Um, again, I don't want to ruin anything if people haven't seen Black Widow, but there's, there's obviously things going on that we saw in there, little hints about things that, that are happening there. And we're like, and, you know, abomination coming back and yep. we've got, you know, it's no secret that General Ross is in Black Widow and he's still hanging about. It's a, so there's that whole thing going on. We've yep. got this, we've got the secret war side of things that's going to be happening. Um, uh, sorry. Secret um, invasion. Secret invasion side of things. And now we've got this multiverse thing. Those are two, uh, three really big 
complicated storylines that are all trying to sort of go well, along at the same time. What you were saying is, when do they happen? Are they all happening at the same, same time, time? These yeah. giant events, or are they going to focus on and you know this happened separately, and then yeah. you know the secret invasion happened here? Uh, it's it's a mess. But yeah. you know, I'm dying to see how they play this out. So Makes I was wondering. So I was wondering, or I was reading something earlier today that that Val is possibly a scroll. Mm. So her recruiting the, these these people, you know, could lead to a secret invasion into taking them over as scrolls at, at some point, possibly. Um, yeah. That could be something there too. Val could be going down the secret invasion route and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's going to be interesting. And, and also too, with secret invasion, um, are we going to see more Kree? Because we, we know that the the, the skull Kree war. I hope so. It's just kind yeah, of what brings, you know, they, they yeah, it's just kind of what ties them over and, and kind of sees, you know, about Earth and, and that kind of stuff. That all plays together. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so uh, let's, let's, we, you know, let's be careful not to go too far away yep. from, uh, from those kind yeah. from Loki. <laughs> I mean, I, I've personally, I think we've, we've covered the finale pretty well there. Um, is yeah. there anything else either of you have got that you want to bring up about the Loki finale? No, no, I think we, we, we covered quite a lot in the yeah. short amount of time here. I thought yeah, it was going to take us a lot longer, but you know, even with that little side, you know, side quest we had, it's, yeah, no, it's I think always there to rein us back in, though. <laughs> I think. Well, bear, bear in mind when you think, you know, we've not done like we would with a normal episode. We've not done any news really. We've not done any page updates. We've not yeah. done anything. We've just gone straight into Loki, and we have been chatting for about nine on an hour here. So uh, I don't think we've done a bad job. Um, so okay, I think we've I think we've wrapped up uh, Loki well and where it's gonna you know what sort of what it's been like the whole series I mean the whole series has been fantastic um I'd probably say it's my favorite of the free Disney plus series so far um absolutely I don't know what you guys you want to you want to uh, give it a ranking you want to um, do a ranking like we did for uh, Black Widow I think it, I, personally I don't I can't even think about that at the moment yeah. I, what I, all <laughs> I will say is I probably would no like, I can't it's too big. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it, we, bear in mind, we've probably seen yeah. you know, five hours of, of television. Um, but I would say I, I would probably rank it as my number one out of the uh, three shows so far. I'd agree with that one. Definitely. I'd agree. Yeah. And, and, because, and that, just because there, there's so much that it it, it, it does, you know, it, it's kind of like the, it's, oh, it's a gateway um, to what else is going to happen. It, it's a huge pivot point where, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier, not as big of a pivot point, but that's still yet to be seen um, with what happened there. Uh, w- Wanda Vision, you know, was kind of a, was more of dealing with Wanda and the aftermath of Infinity War and, and Endgame. Um, so it's a little bit different of, of the shows to kind of really compare them. But yeah, I think Loki is, is <laughs> yeah. the best one. Yeah. Do you know what? I was literally just sitting there thinking while you was talking and, and, and taking what in what you were saying. Actually, it is quite hard because I really enjoyed the story of Falcon and Winter Soldier, and I like the feel of that. I mean, as you as you both know, I, I quite like that espionage. Well, that's why I love it. They, they, yep. They're all completely different. Yep. Yeah, they they're are. They're all completely hard. different in their themes and their stories, and but they also, you know, all connect. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, they've done a great job with Loki. Uh, hopefully, uh, season two will get some more information. At least when that's going to be would be nice because that might be able we might be able to place it a little bit and think how they're going to fit it in um but i think they've done a really good job with that and uh yeah well done marvel studios fantastic Let, let's see if you can keep the um you know keep everything under control over the next uh two years um it'll be interesting to see what you do um any, anything to sign off lads jaren do you want to say anything before we uh before we shut down today no just you know if you if you're looking for stuff to watch, go watch those cartoons on uh, Disney Plus. You know, there's good content in uh, those different Marvel shows. Um, my favorites have been so far uh, Avengers Assemble and Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Um, but the, the, the Spider-Man mm. ones, you know, you mentioned um, the video game and, and Taskmaster and that kind of stuff. Taskmaster is really good in Spider-Man and Avengers Assemble as well. Um, so go check them out. You know, keep looking for more episodes because we're not slowing down. We'll have more content each, each week, too, as well um yeah. so stick around and, and keep listening to us yeah definitely we're going to have some sort of special episodes coming up over the next week or so um and then uh, we'll hopefully be starting to get guests yeah, we got some we got some stuff to fill the gap yeah we have yeah, yeah. yeah. Jason 
Jason, I know you've got something that you wanted to say before we uh, clock off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, first, with, you know, just make sure everybody knows, you know, where to find us and stuff. We've got, you know, obviously the main group. We've got the MCU DNT Plus page on Facebook as well. We've got a bunch of stuff kicking off there. Uh, Jaren and I over on the Instagram, which is at MCU underscore DT. And then actually we just dove in. We've got... Uh, Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on. Bring it back, Jason. Yeah, we'll get you back. Hold on. There he is. There we go. Right, right. Start, start that bit again. You just dove into what? Oh, no. Now we can't hear him. No, we can't hear him. Oh, you're, on, you're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got it. This, right, this start again. Topic we've got. But yeah, so anyways, we got Twitter going. We're on Twitter now. You can find us over there. Jamie and Raymark have been uh, starting to push that. They're doing all the work over there. It's really starting to kick off. So, we're, you know, we're touching every alleyway. You can find us all over now. Yeah, nice. So we're turning this thing into a brand. We're turning this thing into sort of um, – we're trying to get a little bit of everywhere, trying to just um, give people as much exposure as we can to, to what we're trying to do, yeah? Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, it's been a pleasure as always, but it is now getting late for me and Jason really needs to get out of his car. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's clock off. Uh, thank you for me. Thank you for these two. We'll see you next time. See you next Tuesday. Wicked. Well done, guys. Why don't you tell them about the time we faced